and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tammy Bakshi and this time we're going to be going over how you can use Google's TensorFlow API as well as of course deep learning technologies in order to create a word prediction model using an LSTM. Now let's get straight into how this is going to work. So today I'm going to show you how you can actually feed into an LSTM powered by TensorFlow. Uh, actually some data, some text that you've written or that you write on a daily basis. And then that LSTM should be able to predict the next word in a sentence or in a partial sentence that you write. Uh, so let's talk about how this is going to work. Now, if you use uh, a model like, uh, or if you use a keyboard like SwiftKey uh, or the new uh, iOS 8 keyboard, uh, iOS 8 plus keyboard, uh, you know there are little you know, word predictions on the top of your keyboard. Uh, and so you can see that these word predictions uh, basically are personalized uh, based off of your Google, your Gmail, your, uh, your uh, Facebook, your Twitter, uh, your, uh, your contacts. And so basically you'll take a lot of different texts you write uh, this keyboard and then learn how you write to, how you like to write text and what words usually come after other words using machine learning technology and so now I'm going to show you how you can actually replicate that effect using tensorflow let's get into it now if I actually uh, start off here uh, the point behind this uh, LSTM or long short-term memory recurrent neural network uh, is to be able to take in a partial sentence that you write. Like for example, if I say uh, thank you very much for your email in my emails a lot, then if I were to write thank you very much for, it should automatically, it should automatically predict your and email uh, once I type that out. Uh, and so this is how we're going to achieve that. Now it actually starts off with the data set that we're going to feed into the LSTM. And of course this is going to be a bunch of emails that I've written over, over time. Uh, and basically, I'm going to take a bunch of emails that I've written, copy and paste them into a document, and there you go. You've got your data set. Now, of course, though, I'm using an incredibly small data set for this task. You're probably going to want to use many, many more words or basically many, many more documents uh, if you want to get a good classifier that can actually predict the next word you want to write correctly. However, I'm going to be using a small model because I'm going to be showing you a refined example. Uh, and of course, you can train larger models if you'd like to yourself. All right, so now after that, we've got a library, and this library will basically act as this black box that will allow us to train and sample from LSTM networks. Now, uh, this was actually developed by uh, Shergil Ozer. I'm sorry if, not, if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Uh, however, essentially the point of this uh, is that it's called CAR RNN TensorFlow. Okay. Uh, and so basically the point of this little, uh, this is uh, sni this uh, code that he's shared on GitHub uh, is to be able to train LSTM networks uh, ju just like how Eindridge Carpathy uses character uh, or car RNN that he created uh, with Torch. It's, it's just that he's replicated that uh, in TensorFlow and that is the result. So car RNN TensorFlow. Uh, and so what happens is I will actually go ahead uh, and take this email data set that I've prepared uh, and feed it into car RNN TensorFlow. And then once it's inside of car RNN TensorFlow, we can then define a model inside of car RNN tensor TensorFlow. And then once we define the model, it should go ahead and start training. And in just a little while, you should see that you get actually a quite low loss value. And once your loss value is quite low, uh, then you're ready to actually start predicting using this model. Uh, and so the car RNN, what it does, uh, is it actually outputs an, uh, a saved model uh, as a checkpoint. Uh, and so again, what this does is it creates a new LSTM TensorFlow model. And so this is a new LSTM model. Okay. Uh, and so the car RNN TensorFlow will output this model. Now, after this model has been outputted, we're ready to actually feed in data into this model and see what it predicts. Now, you're going to be feeding in a prime into this model. Now a prime depicts what the uh, what the starting uh, the starting text or basically the seed uh, of this uh, of the output should be, uh, and essentially what will happen is let's just say uh, the, the prime has to be your partial sentence. So let's just say as the prime in this case I would say thank you very much for, and then what would happen that sentence would go into the LSTM model, and the LSTM model will then output 
the next 50 or so characters that it believes you would write. And so this would be the next 50 characters. Okay, and so once the LSTM model gives you those next 50 characters, now you've got multiple different words that it's predicted one after the other. So you have to have a way to, pr to extract the next word that this LSTM predicted. And so what would happen is you would then feed it into a very small Python script that would do word extraction. And so there would be a word extractor. In Python, again, very, very simple. And that will basically find the next word that the LSTM predicted after your prime text. And then once you feed those next 50 characters into the word extractor, the word extractor will give you finally the next word that it believed, that the LSTM believes you would write. And there you go. And that is the entire system diagram of how the logic behind this entire system works. And so now, again, just to recap, we're going to be feeding in some training data into CAR, RNN, and TensorFlow, which will train an LSTM model for us. I'll then feed in a prime to the LSTM model, which will then generate multiple different words after the, uh, after the prime uh, to create basically this average paragraph of what I would say after that prime text. Then what will happen is it'll j it will take those next 50 characters or so, uh, and we'll feed that into a word extractor, which will extract the next word after the prime text. And finally, that next word is the next word the LSTM predicts that we would usually write, depending on the context of everything before the prime text and, of course, the prime text itself. All right, so now let's get into how you can actually build a system using CAR, R, and N TensorFlow. Let's get to it now. All right, so welcome back to the code part, and now I'm going to be showing you how you can actually code in this entire system. Now, if I go back to my terminal right over here, as you can see, we've got the car RNN TensorFlow folder here, uh, and if I ls in here, we've got you see we've got a few folders, uh, and so the uh, and so for car RNN to work, you have to have a few different directories. First of all, you have to have your data directory, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But you also have to have your save checkpoint directory, which is where it will actually save the trained models too. And once it saves the trained models, then you can actually use the trained models once they've been trained enough uh, to actually run your word prediction tasks. Uh, let's begin with the data directory. Now if I go to the data directory, as you can see, uh, there are a few directories inside of data, uh, but inside of data we've also got one more directory called Tanmay Email. Uh, 10 May emails. Uh, and if I ls this, as you can see, we've got a few different uh, files here. Uh, you only need to create input.txt. Uh, it'll, it'll automatically create data.npy and vocab.pkl for you. Um, uh, all you need to do is create input.txt. And in fact, if I get the first three lines of input.txt, uh, you can see that these are the first three lines inside of that input text field, uh, text, uh, te um, text file. Uh, however, of course, there are many more lines, and each line contains a line from an email that I sent to someone. Uh, and so basically I'm going to be training the system to actually uh, create this word prediction model based off of my emails. Now remember though, because I'm not using very much training data at all, uh, it is a little bit hard uh, to train this model because of overfitting issues. However, of course, if you were to use enough data, for example, I'm, I'm only using email, but if you were to concatenate a lot of data from Twitter, Facebook, uh, email, and your contacts, uh, it could become, of, of course, much, much more accurate uh, and, of course, much more context sensitive. Uh, of course, though, if we were to go back, you can see inside of the save email, uh, you, ju you just need to have this as an empty directory. Once you're done training, all of these files will come into, into this directory. All right, so once that's done, you're ready to continue. Now, so that I do not overwrite the pre-trained models that I've already got prepared, I'm going to create a new checkpoint directory called save email YouTube. Once that's ready, you're start to uh, you're ready to start training your model. Now, the way you actually train the model is by calling Python train.py, and you're going to pass it a data directory uh, of data slash Tanmay emails. Okay, uh, and the save directory is going to be save email YouTube. Then click enter and let it work its magic. It's then going to load in all the data. 
and it's going to get start it's going to start training all right, so once it is started, uh, once it has started to train, of course, I've actually set this to do uh, not too many epochs, uh, and so this should, this, this should uh, not take too much time. However, instead of having you watch uh, this model train, uh, I decided that uh, I should have a pre-trained model that you can actually look at uh, and see how it performs. Now, again, it's on the exact same data, on the exact same model configuration. The only thing uh, is that I've already pre-trained it, so that you don't need to watch this model train. So if I control C out of this, as you can see, the loss is getting extremely low, and at this point, we're starting to overfit. But then again, I'm not using very much data. When you use a lot more data, this overfitting will not be a concern. Uh, however, once that's done training, you're ready to move on to the sampling stage, and the sampling stage will allow you to actually run your word prediction tasks. Now, if I were to actually run python sample.py, uh, and of course, we need to pass it the save directory again, which in this case is save email. Uh, uh, and of course, though, we need to pass it some sort of prime. And in this case, my prime will be, say, Watson made simple or Watson made. OK, uh, and if you know, I have a, an IBM Facebook Live series called Watson Made Simple with Tanmay. Uh, and so I, I have mentioned this in a, in a few different emails to people. Uh, and so if I pass this as my prime, it should be able to guess simple as the next word. Let's see. Now this will of course uh, create uh, a few, uh, quite a few more characters uh, than than just one more word because of course this is based off of characters and not words. It just it doesn't generate words. It generates a lot of characters, uh, and so as you can see, it generated a lot of characters. But in the beginning, we've got our prime, which is Watson made space, and after that, we've got the word simple. However, well, sure, it did of course predict the next word. But how can we actually extract simple out of it? Well, this is where my next script comes in. The next script, if I actually show you here, uh, will actually run this sample script on a prime you give it. And then once you pass in that prime, it'll actually parse that result in order to give you uh, your final answer, which is the, end of the next word using this logic. It'll split the result from the sample script by every new line. It'll get the first line, uh, and then it'll split, every, uh, it'll split everything in that first line uh, by spaces. It'll then get the specific element, which is equal to the length uh, of uh, the prime itself being split up by spaces uh, minus one. Uh, and so basically, like for example, if the prime you passed it was Watson made space, uh, then in th then uh, what should happen uh, is the array would be Watson made. Uh, and in fact, I can actually go uh, to a Python shell here and I can do Watson made and do dot split space. All right. Oh, and as you can see, also gives a little extra uh, ending here as well. Uh, and so what I can do is just go back here. So what happens if we were to pass in this string as a prime, then this would be the output uh, of, uh, of this right here, the prime dot split space. Uh, and so the length of this um, would be, of course, three. And then of course, what you would do is you would do uh, the length minus one, uh, and then, of course, that would be 2. Uh, and then what you would do is you would take the result, which uh, the result is too long to put in here. Uh, but if you were to split that up by every new line, then you would get every line. So you would take the first line, and from that, it would split it by every space. Uh, and so you would get, you know, Watson made simple dot dot dot. Uh, and then once you've got that, you can just get um, from this uh, specifically the second element, as we decided here. And as you can see, this is the zeroth element, this is the first element, this is the second element, uh, and the output of this should be simple. And so that's how the entire logic behind that one line works. Uh, I just compressed all of this into one line instead of creating multiple different lines for this. And that's why it seems a little bit complicated, but this is the actual logic that goes behind extracting that word. Uh, and so now, though, if I were to actually run that script that I just created on Watson made, it would run that exact same uh, that exact same script in the back end, uh, and it will extract out the word simple, and it should return, oh, sometimes it requires, uh, you know, of course, it's an LSTM, it's, uh, it's word prediction, it's not ever, you know, completely predictable, uh, but of course, as you can see, it has now returned simple as the correct answer. And now, of course, if I were, you know, on an actual iOS keyboard, I would click on the word simple instead of typing out simple. 
And then what would happen is it would automatically start suggesting words that would come next. Uh, and then, of course, it would say, uh, Watson made simple episode. That's also something that could be correct. You know, Watson made simple episode. Uh, but, of course, Watson made simple with could also be correct because that would suggest with tan may. And then, as you can see, it says T can't. Uh, but, uh, again, it's an LSTM, not completely predictable. And, of course, I'm not using a lot of training data. But if you were to use a lot more training data, you could get much, much better results. In fact, what you could actually do is use the training data behind SwiftKey itself in order to create a base model, and then of course improve that model ever so slightly and fine-tune it towards the user's specifications and the user's interests uh, by of course uh, feeding in the emails, Facebook posts, tweets, uh, and contacts of the user while keeping that base as a huge training data uh, from, for example, blogs or the news or something of that sort to create this really great English base. But of course, though, I will not be going into that in this video, uh, as this is intended to be a simple video to show you how you can get a word prediction model up and running, uh, and in fact, using TensorFlow, which of course is absolutely great, uh, and, and of course, the best part is that this doesn't require, you know, too much training, like sequence-to-sequence -sequence models. This is a regular, long, short-term memory uh, model uh, that will allow you uh, to, of course, uh, estimate your, uh, or predict the next, uh, the next word uh, in your sentence. And plus, the thing is, it'll actually continue the context uh, from the rest of your sentence. It wouldn't just say, okay, uh, if, you've got the, if you've got the sentence Watson made, then it should be simple next. If you had sentences before Watson made simple, uh, then it would be able to, you know, infer context from those sentences, uh, which is why LSTMs are just so, so powerful. And that is exactly how you can build this word prediction model in TensorFlow using long short-term memory networks. Of course, there will be a link to uh, the CAR RNN TensorFlow uh, in the description below, as well as all of the code that I used, uh, which is the word predict.py file in the description as well. Unfortunately, I will not able to provide uh, the emails data set uh, that I was talking about. Uh, however, of course, you can use either your own emails data set if you've got enough, uh, or if you if you don't have enough emails or you know messages, uh, then you can of course use pre uh, you know uh, data from online like the Enron email data set, which should be able to provide a good language base for you to train off of. All right, so thank you very much for joining in today. Uh, that's going to be it for this video. I really do hope you were able to learn from this and enjoy uh, watching this video. Of course, though, if you were able to learn from this, please do make sure to consider sharing the video uh, as well as liking it as well, as it really does help out a lot. Uh, and of course, if you have if you've got any more questions, suggestions, or feedback, leave, please leave it down in the comments section below. You can email it to me at tajimani at gmail.com or tweet it to me at tajimani. All right, so thank you very much. But of course, if you really like my content and you want to see a lot more, more of it, please do consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as well, as it really does help out a lot. Uh, and of course, please do make sure to turn on notifications if you'd like to be notified whenever I release new content. So thank you very much for joining in today. That's going to be all for this tutorial. Goodbye.